Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how you can apply feature scaling to data within Python through the help of scikit-learn. Now, what feature scaling allows you to do is help improve your models and their performance by converting numerical values into the same exact scale. Now, I'm gonna show you two different methods on how to do this, both normalization and also standardization. Now, what normalization allows you to do is have numbers from zero to one. Now, the formula that scikit-learn uses is you take your x value minus the minimum and you divide that by the maximum minus the minimum. And the package that you're gonna be using is min-max scalar. Now, standardization on the other side of things has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Think of kind of like a normal distribution that looks like this over here. Now, this is done by taking x, minusing the mean and dividing it by the standard deviation. And unlike normalization, which is bounded between zero and one, in fact, you can have negatives and you can have positive numbers much larger than one. Think of maybe two or three. Since you can have larger numbers, standardization is much more preferred when you do have outliers within your data. With that being said, I'm gonna jump on my computer right now and let's code these through some examples. Okay, so let's start off with importing pandas as PD. You should be super familiar with that, especially if you watch other videos on the channel. So importing over there. The next thing we wanna do is create our data frame. Now, I already have some data for you guys. I have it down below in my GitHub. It's 500 hits CSV. So pd.read CSV. And then I'm gonna put over here 500 hits dot CSV. Now this one, you're gonna to have to add some encoding in here just because how the file was created and pulled it. I talked about this in another video, but just make sure it's a Latin one like this. Again, feel free to copy this code. Exactly. And now our data frame is defined. Now I am going to drop two columns on this one. Um, so I'm going to be dropping and I'll show you what actually let's show you what the data frame looks like first. So I'll just show you real quick before we drop those. So this is just a head of five. Uh, so essentially this is a bunch of different baseball players. Most of them have over like 1500 or 2000 hits. I pulled it from ESPN. Uh, so you have like player years, games, at bats, runs, hits, doubles, triples, home runs, RBIs, walks, strikeouts, stolen bases, caught stealing, batting average, and Hall of Fame. Uh, data here doesn't matter too much. I just want to show you guys what the initial side of things look like before we end up changing it with both the standard scaler and also the min max scaler. So at least you guys can see on that side of things. Now the columns I'm going to drop are player um, because we can't change this out. Es essentially that these are going to be all strings over here and we need numeric values. So I'm gonna drop that one over here. And I don't really need caught stealing. I did another video with this data and it doesn't really matter too much to me. So all I'm gonna just do is a df equals df dot drop. And then you have just have to put in here the, what columns. So I'm gonna say columns equal, and then just in here, player all caps, put a comma over here and then CS. That's, and then those are now dropped. So just to show you a little bit more info now that I've dropped these two columns, so you just put in df.info and you can see all these over here. Ints, batting average is a float, which makes sense. You can see over here decimal 0366, 0331, 345, 310, 329, and then int again. So all data that we can quite change up. Next thing I wanna show you guys is a describe. So df.describe, and I'm gonna round this as well. So we're gonna just gonna do round and you can put three on that side of things. Uh, so you can see how this changes up over here. So like the mean years is 17 with this data, uh, games 2048, at bats 7511, runs 1150. So like these numbers are all over the place, right? Because you have something like a batting average, which is 289 uh, for the average over here. And then on the other side of things, right? Like stolen bases 195, strikeouts 847, hits all the way at 2170. So we're gonna standardize this all across the board. Now what we're gonna do is use iLock and I'm gonna assign X1 and X2. I don't want this also the Hall of Fame over here because this is the desired outcome. Uh, so what I'm gonna grab is these 13 over here and label them. Now X1, I'm gonna put through a standard scalar and then in X2, I'm gonna put through the min max so you guys can see the difference on that. Now the code is gonna be the same on these. So all I'm gonna do is DF, right, DF, dot i lock and then put a colon over here we're going to put a comma and say zero through 13 and i'm just going to copy and paste this both of these 
they're exactly the same, uh, but that way you guys can see how this data will change up here at the very end. And with that being said, we can start applying standard and min max scaling. So I'm going to start with standard and pretty easy to import. So all you have to do is from SK learn dot pre processing. We're going to import and then standard scalar standard scalar like this. And then once this is imported, you need to call your standard scalar. So what I'm just going to do is scale. I'm going to put standard like this. Um, usually I just put scalar, but just because I'm going to differentiate between the two, just want to show you guys how that works and then just call this. So I'm just going to copy this over here. We're doing nothing too special on this one, right? And now what we're going to do is fit the data. Uh, if you're familiar with a lot of SK learn, we do that all the time. So what I'm going to do is X one equals, and I'm going to say scale standard dot fit transform and I'm going to just throw X one in here now. Okay. Which is great. Up next, I'm going to turn X one back into a data frame. Um, so it's currently not a data frame, but we can do that pretty easily with pandas. So I'm just going to do X one equals PD dot data frame like this. Then we're going to just put X one in here and then we have to define all these different columns that we're going to use. I already retyped this out, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Um, but I'm just up that. And just make sure everything is correct. We closed it out here at the very end. Boom, we have that over there. And now we can take a look at this again. So let's just do over here like x1, oops, x1.head. So you guys can see what this data looks like over here. So our first five results over here. So year is 2.5, 1.79, 1.791, 1 1.4, right? Home runs, negative, and makes sense, right? Because essentially what we're doing on this side of things is we're making our mean zero and our standard deviation one, which is kind of cool to see on things like whoever this player was over here hit a lot of triples, right? A lot of triples, didn't hit a lot of triples, was so actually below average. And just to show you how this works as well, we're just gonna put over here x1.describe like this. And I'm gonna do a rounding of three. So round three, just to clean up the data a little bit. And here we go, right? So our counts are still 465 across the board. Our mean now is gonna be zero, which is great because now we can see where this data lies. And our standard dea deviation is gonna be one. Now you can see the minimums and maximums are gonna be different for everything across the board, which is gonna be different than our min max, which I'll show you guys how to do that shortly. But for example, years, right? Our minimum is negative 2.1, but our maximum is 3.2. That's based off of this standard deviation over here. You can see the 25%, 50 and 75%. It's all gonna vary across the board quite a bit, um, but this data is well, well cleaned up, uh, especially on this side of things, right? Like we go back over here, this was all over the place, right? Like hits, if you take a look at the mean, 2170, but now hits, our mean is zero and we built it around the standard deviation of one. Okay. So hopefully you got that down. Remember this is standardization. Now we're going to go into normalization. Now normalization, we're going to have everything go from zero to one and you'll see the max on all these is going to be about one and our minute is going to be zero. Now our standard deviation and also our mean are going to be completely different. But again, another way to kind of format the data for that way you put it into your models. So very similar process as the one before. So we're going to go into sklearn preprocessing. So sklearn.preprocessing like that. And we're going to import min max scalar. Now that is imported on that side of things. So again, scale, I'm just going to put min max. Again, I always just like put scalar or scale either way. And we're going to put this over here, min max scalar and What's kind of cool is you don't have to always do zero to one. I'm just gonna do this for this example because I'd prefer that, uh, but I'll show you how you can change that. So you have something called a feature range here, and then we're gonna put equals, and I'm gonna just do zero one, but feel free to change this to however you want for your own models. But in this example, I'll do zero to one. Next, I'm gonna define X2 again, so, and scale that. So we have this X2, we're gonna say scale min max, and we'll do fit, transform. So 
pretty much identical as the one from earlier, right, from the standard scaler. And now X2 is based off of the submin max scaler. Now I'm gonna just copy and paste this code. And essentially what I'm doing is like above. So X2 is pd.dataframe X2 and just copying over all these columns. I just don't wanna type them out, right? And now we have our data frame with X2. So we just go over here and do X2.head and run that. You can see now, right? 0 0.86, 0 0.73, 0 0.6. We're not gonna have anything larger than one. Now, if you remember from earlier, right? This triples over here was 4.38 on the standard scalar side of things, which is really high, right? Down here, 0 0.95. Again, super high, but it's not over one. And then you can see down below in number three, 0 0.205. We go to number three over here, negative 0 0.25. So just a, a different way to represent your data, especially when you're gonna be building out your models. What's kind of nice too, is if we go over here, the x2 describe, and just like earlier, I'm gonna do a round of three. So just round three. You can see we still 465 across the board. Our mean is gonna be different for everything, right? Instead of zero, we have 0 0.403, 0 0.363, 0 0.343. Our standard deviation is also different. Instead of one, now we have 0 0.184, 0 0.179, right? And our minimum across the board is zero with our maximum being one. So just to put these side by side, just to show you guys how that works, we just do X1 over here. Again, mean different, standard deviation different, and our data is now cleaned up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel as it does take a while to produce these videos. By the way, if you wanna use a min max scaler in a model, I have a video over here where I applied this to a KNN.